Hi everyone, uh, it's Nicole again, um, and I'm back for my third video. Um, and I'd like to start off by emphasizing that these videos that I'm making are strictly my experience with the 670 so far, um, and absolutely under no circumstances meant to be taken as medical advice. Um, as any type 1 diabetic knows, things change by the day, even within the same user. Um, and one thing that's true, one day is not the next, um, and that's just how it is. So I'm sharing what I'm finding to be true, only in the hopes that maybe somebody who's stumbling across a similar problem, you know, might give them a new idea. Um, not to be taken, you know, as a as doctor's advice or anything else. Um, with that being said, I talked a little bit in yesterday's video about kind of the, the personalities of the, um, the, the 670. And so I was thinking I'd like to go back to that today because what I'd really like to do is, is share about auto mode and the strengths that auto mode has. Um, but I feel like for either new users or people considering it, um, that you really kind of have to get a good understanding of what the difference between manual and auto mode is. Um, so to go back to my personalities, because that's what I really do think they are, um, I'd like to start off by saying that manual mode, to me, is an awful lot like an authoritarian figure. Um, it is gonna put its you know, foot down and it's, and it's going to get to work and get it done. Um, whereas the auto mode, to me, is a little bit more like a people pleaser um, who is making accommodations, taking things into consideration, kind of going with it, um, and really just wants to help. Um, so I was going to start off by saying that when I first got my pump, um, you know, you have about a week that you're in manual mode, uh, maybe less, before you can enter auto mode. Once you go into auto mode, you think that this is where you're supposed to be. You think that this is this thinking pump that is going to just take care of all these things for you. Um, you are told to you know, give it constant BGs, and that's, that's an absolute necessity. Um, but it didn't take me long to figure out that auto mode was sending me a little high and keeping me a little high, and sometimes sending me way too high. Um, and over time, I have figured out for me why that, that might be true. Um, when, I get into, um, when I get into auto mode and I start going high, I'm finding now that what I need to do is I need to go back to manual mode. Um, I need to go back to the one that's gonna take care of business. Um, manual mode is gonna give me a rigid basal rate, which is what I said yesterday, and this is going to be constant regardless of what my current blood sugar is, it's gonna give me this rate. Of course, I should also mention that if you have a suspend on, that would, that would, that would uh, differ. Um, but until you get too low, okay? So it's, it's not thinking about what you're doing right now, it's just giving you this basal rate. Um, when you need a correction bolus, it's going to hit you with a full correction bolus. Um, you know, you're using your bolus wizard. So it is really hitting you hard with insulin. For this reason, for myself, I find that most of my hypoglycemia, which has drastically improved since using the 670, um, <clears throat> most of my hypoglycemia does occur within manual mode. Um, and it's old school pumping. It's you know, you, you crash, you eat your way out, you um, treat a high, if there's a rebound high with insulin, you crash, you eat your way out, you, you know, it's repeat. Um, here comes auto mode then, right? Because this one is really, really different than any other kind of insulin pump I've ever used. Um, uh, the auto mode, as I said, is more of a people pleaser, and this is why. This one is making accommodations. It's taking into consideration what your current blood sugar is, it's even trying to predict where you're headed. It's trying to head, you know, head off a low. It's trying to head off a high. It's, and it's doing all this um, by number crunching. And it's going back and forth between doing minimum delivery, where it's cutting off your basal, um, and to um, micro boluses, where it's giving you adjusted amounts based on your trends and your patterns and, and your current status, uh, which is amazing. I mean, it's really cool. Um, but like a people pleaser who can maybe take on more than they can handle because they just want to do, you know, because they just want to help. Um, it can get in over its head and that's the way I see it now. I see that sometimes auto mode just gets in over its head and that would be when I would move back out to manual mode. Uh, a, a quick example is last night, my blood sugar was a 250. 
um, manual mode, uh, auto mode, I try to put in uh, my sugar and it gave me an estimated correction of a 0.2, um, which was obviously not enough. I mean, I had a little bit of insulin on board, but not a ton. Um, so I'd said it's time to go back out to my authoritarian, let's get it done. I went out to manual mode. Um, it gave me a 1.4 for the exact same sugar and the exact same insulin on board. It gave me a 1.4. So I remained in auto, I remained in manual mode for a little while um, until I could bring my sugars down, at which point I was thinking about entering auto mode again, but not before I had my sugar crush. Um, as I said, it's, that's kind of how it goes. So as soon as the sugar crash started, I got myself back, in, I corrected, I got myself back into auto mode and then the rest of the night was great. Which brings me to what auto mode is great for, and I'd really like to talk about those things. Um, your overnight is one. Um, helping you prevent hypoglycemia is another. And very surprisingly to me, um, <clears throat> during exercise, auto mode is amazing. So um, I am six minutes into this, so I'm gonna go ahead and end this right now, and then I'll come back with some other stuff later. Bye.